Okay, so I want to talk about... Okay, a lot of people avoid wheat, rye, oats, and barley because of gluten. And a lot of people have good reason to avoid gluten as some people are diagnosed with celiac disease, which is real serious. And other people just have a large intolerance to gluten. And, you know, I think that it's possible that there's an underlying reason, too, why a lot of people can't tolerate gluten. And I think a lot of it could be from excess animal, consum animal food consumption and as well as dairy consumption. I think that it could cause problems with the digestive system because those two foods both don't have fiber and dairy in and of itself can be very allergenic and can cause a lot of inflammation probably to the GI tract. And so what I've found is that by being on a 100% plant-based diet, um, usually my digestive system is right, you know, functioning really well, even by consuming, you know, sprouted grain, wheat, and things like that. I do think that the sprouted grains are much more digestible and um, basically are tolerated by the body a lot more effectively than just consuming, you know, wheat straight up. Of course, you want to make sure that if you choose to consume wheat, you get the organic kind. But, yeah, that's been my um, experience with consuming, you know, like oats and, and wheat and things like that, you know. I think a lot of it has to do with other problems, and it's not... Um, you know, gluten per se that's causing a lot of the problems. Now, the only way you would really know if gluten is a problem for you is not consuming any of it for at least a, two weeks to a month and then try eating it again to see what happens. But, you know, in my experience, after my four months of being vegan 100%, I didn't really ever have any problems consuming the sprouted grain bread, which has wheat in it nor did I have any problems with consuming oatmeal. Now, I don't consume oatmeal on a regular basis, but I mean oats and uh, rye, you know, there's a lot of B vitamins and other nutrients in there, and if you were to go on a gluten-free diet and you didn't really have to, you kind of miss out on some of those nutrients. So, I think a lot of people sometimes get so caught up into the hype that they go on the gluten-free diets when really gluten isn't even really a problem for them. So, yeah, they have eliminated gluten, they've eliminated, you know, rye, wheat, uh, oats, and barley, but that can kind of be a drawback because all those foods do contain nutrients any way you want to slice it down the middle. So sometimes when somebody is not actually intolerant to gluten and they remove those foods, they're actually missing out on more nutrients. So the bottom line is, you know, um, unless you actually get diagnosed with celiac disease or you really believe that you have a problem with gluten, only then I think you should avoid it. Now, I'm not, am I saying just to consume tons and tons of wheat and tons and tons of oats and tons and tons of rye and barley? Of course not, you know, have balance, but I think sometimes people can go over the edge and become real extreme with the avoidance of particular foods when really it's not even necessary. So, bottom line is, I really don't think that um, most people should have a fear of, you know, these wholesome gluten-containing foods and only should if they are actually know for certain if they're intolerant or have gluten sensitivities or, like I said, celiac disease. So, um, you know, try to balance your foods out because, you know, once you start eliminating plant foods, it can be much harder to sustain yourself over the long term. And as you know, you know I'm not a, a huge proponent of 100% raw food diets. I think eating large amounts of raw foods is really great, but I think that once you get into the 100% um, group, it can start messing with you psychologically. So, bottom line is, don't fear the gluten so much.